Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 144, and it's titled Sexual Qigong and Increasing Your Sexual Energy. So on today's show, we've got some Qigong experts. And they have a really fascinating story. I'm not going to get into it yet because I'm going to let them tell the story. But they, they had some pretty challenging times and they used some Qigong and some other natural things to get past those. And from that, they've really learned some interesting things about their sex life, which is what we are most concerned about <laughs> on this show. <laughs> so I, I think this will be really interesting because really what it's getting into is sexual energy, the movement of sexual energy, how that can influence not only your sex, but your life and your physical body as well. And it's something we talk about a lot on this show, sexual energy and how to move it. So I think it's going to be really fascinating having some people who are really experts in moving that energy through your body. And how you're not separated, how it's all connected. So stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of gems in today's show. But before we get started, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors, Power and Mastery. So if you want to join Join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men, whether you want to have harder erections, last longer in the bedroom, or increase your sexual skills, there is something for you at powerandmastery.com. So go check it out. Our guests today are Yadi, Yadi Alamin and Joy Abraham, and they are the founders of Charlotte Reflexology, where they provide alternative therapy influenced by ancient Eastern medicine and modern science. They are partners in life and business. Yadi was diagnosed with a potentially fat fatal disease at 24 and learned how to heal himself without surgery, drugs, and a cocktail of herbs. His philosophy is simple, do what works and do it often. It's kind of like sex, do what works and do it often, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so welcome Yadi and Joy to the Love Lab podcast. Hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the kind of introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so Yadi, you were, uh, we'll start with you. We'll put you on the spotlight first and then we'll get to you, Joy, as well. But Yadi, you were terminally ill as we shared in the uh, little description here. So tell us more about your journey because you went from like being kind of nearly dead to uh, really like a thriving human being again. And I know you went from the allopathic road to the acupuncture road. So give our listeners a little bit of an understanding about that journey you went on. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'll be 46, uh, probably by the time people see this, um, that my birthday is within what, three weeks yeah. of, of today. Uh, about 21 years ago, uh, after working in pharmacy and working as a, a phlebotomist, you know, as a vampire, drawing people's blood, working in the <laughs> hospital system, uh, I got very sick. And I was in the ER about uh, six days out of 10 with, um, you know, ex ex the expectation that I was going to die. Like my heart started racing. I couldn't breathe. And, you know, the first time I went, I called the ambulance. And the other times that I drove in, uh, every time I was told I had anxiety, I was given Xanax, I had never taken medicine, and I'd really never been sick. Um, so after the sixth visit, they referred me to somebody else, GP, gastroenterologist, specialist here, uh, and they determined I had some condition called idiopathic autoimmune hepatitis, which in English means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> idiopathic. I think is you uh, autoimmune that was a good guess um, and then hepatitis because my liver was inflamed hepato and then itis um, but me being 24 years old and basically a knucklehead I didn't uh, understand or know to argue with them and over the next six months I went from 155 pounds to 116 pounds uh, there's a picture of me on the wall inspired by Jordan Rubin's patient heal thyself where I was I was emaciated um, I was skin and bones and my eyes looked like I'm scared to, to die because I was. And at that point, um, I was suicidal and called my mother who was here in Charlotte. I was in Chicago 
And I said, mom, I want to die. And she says, well, go to the acupuncturist, which she was last minute just trying to keep me from killing myself. Um, so I found the guy in a book, had on the, the uh, Chinese uniform, which I now know the right name of, but at the time I knew nothing. And I figured this would be great because he could just in the neck and I'd die. And, <laughs> you know, it would be like a Kung Fu movie, like, you know, you dishonored me, pow, and then, <laughs> which of course that didn't happen. Uh, he looked at my tongue and my pulse and he told me, uh, you liver, spleen, kidney, put me on the table. This is Chicago winter, so it was like 20 degrees outside on the high. He's putting his hands on a radiator and he's <gasps> touching my body. And for the first time getting off the table in a year, I could breathe and didn't feel like I was going to implode. Um, so I, I went for eight months, paid out of pocket. And if you're sick, you don't have money because you can't really work. After eight months, I begged to be a student, which that was the beginning of uh, Qigong. I, I learned um, Zanzong or standing. And after that, learned all the little pieces, the like eight piece brocade, uh, ping shui, uh, pai da, all the basics of Qigong to save my life. And for the next seven years, I was his student and apprentice working in Chinatown for $10 an hour. But I healed, I'm here, uh, I survived, and it worked. So that's, that's it. And did you learn Chinese in the process? The, the language? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to be blown away there. I'm like, wow, if you picked up Chinese in that process, that'd be like really amazing. No, it's still an amazing story. <laughs> so I have, a, I have an interesting follow-up question. So when you went to the acupuncturist, did you have an expectation that he would be able to heal you? Were you like, oh yeah, this is going to be great? Or, or... Um, good question. Uh, I had tried other things, obviously, like you go on the internet. Back then it was Yahoo. And I tried yoga, which is cool. Stretching routine um, didn't make me well. I tried every herb you could try. And I just really didn't care. And I, if you're suicidal, you, you have no expectations. You, no, I didn't expect him to heal me. Absolutely not. And the fact that here's what stands out. And I know we're going to talk about love and we're going to talk about affection, but I never liked anybody. I hated people, literally hated people. And for this man to save my life, not being overtly uh, flowery and, and nice, but to save my life out of human kindness, that's what changed things. Mm -hmm. So I had no expectation and that's when the miracle happened. See, I find, I find that fascinating, amazing. And the reason I asked that question is because you know, we know of the placebo effect and we know that that is a real thing. So yep. if you had gone in with this expectation that this crazy wizard, you know, Chinese medicine guy is going to heal me, we could maybe say that that was, that was part of it. But because you didn't have that expectation, we, cannot, we can pretty safely say that that's not what was going on, that something genuinely happened there with that uh, medicine, Chinese medicine, Qigong, that he was doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, to convince me otherwise would be impossible, but to convince me that it was going to work also, you couldn't tell me anything. I, like, if I didn't like you, I, I wouldn't believe you anyway. So, yeah, I had no, it's not placebo. It, it's kind of like trial by fire. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, like in the old days of China, this is at going ahead. If what you do doesn't work, you got your head cut off. Like, <laughs> mm. so, so there's no placebo in the in the ancient world. Like, it's it's going to work or it's not and know. back then they used to have the acupuncturist you would pay him to stay well and if you got sick you would stop paying him so he had this like drive you mean he had an incentive an to incentive. actually make sure that you were healthy exactly shocking what a crazy idea <laughs> yeah. that's, um, that's a that's a quote from the nanjing actually i i I, I don't want to try and be pretentious. It's it's in chapter 60 or 70 something in the book of questions where it says the uh, the inferior physician treats diseases that are manifest and the excellent physician treats things before they uh, happen. They manifest, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. So for our listeners, I, at some point, I want to come back to 
what is Qigong, what is acupuncture. I'm, I'm assuming most people know, but some people don't. But maybe before we get into that, uh, why don't you, Joy, give us a little bit too of a, a little overview of your own self-healing story um, because I know you had something too pretty amazing that happened and then we can like explain all of the details to our listeners yeah, sure sure and um, it's interesting because my healing journey does involve him and what I did not realize was that my healing would involve my life partner when I met him at the time. So I was a very active, very young, active woman. I was a professional dancer and I was also a flight attendant. So I was going all over the place, doing shows and going to different cities and, you know, having a great time. And soon afterwards, I was having trouble walking. So for a dancer to not be able to do something simple as walking is very debilitating, very devastating. And soon I had to stop with my career because I was really having some troubles and I knew that I needed to fix it, but I wasn't sure exactly what to do to do that, to, you know, to fix that problem. So um, I made a decision that I was going to find out how I needed to fix this problem, but I was going to do it in a natural way because I had already done lots of over-the-counter medications, pain relievers, and they weren't working. And I did not want to go the normal Western medical route because I could see that that wasn't going to be um, aligned with my beliefs. And I wanted to do something different. So I made a decision and I walked into a health food store and I saw him. <laughs> and he says, how can I help you? I said, do you have Chinese bitters? And he looked at me kind of strange, and I, I'm wondering why he's looking at me wait, like wait. that. I worked there. I wasn't just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He didn't, he didn't work there. <laughs> I wouldn't have asked him any, any other way. But I asked him, you know, do you have Chinese bitters? And he looked at me strangely and said, no, what do you need them for? So I told him about what was happening with my body and the pain that I was having from, you know, the injury and not being able to walk. And he suggested a mushroom that I took in another time in my life in another country that helped with previous health issues. And I was surprised that somebody like him knew about that mushroom. And so I thought, wow. <laughs> so we talked for a long time, I think about an hour in the store, so much so that people looked at us and said, you know, what, what are you guys doing? This guy's working here. I need help. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like I need help too. <laughs> so he said, why don't you come to my Qigong class? And I thought, that would be a great idea. I'd love to come. And I didn't go that day that he invited me. I came the next week. And uh, we made a connection at the class. And we went out on a date. On that date, I couldn't walk. I, I had a hip flare. And I was trying to hide it. It was mm. very hard to do because this is a guy who knows very much about body mechanics. And he could already tell that I was having a very hard time walking. He's like, what's wrong with you? So I told him and he said, okay, let's do this 20 minute Qigong set. It's a summer night in here in North Carolina in the summer night, it's still hot and muggy, but we're outside in the park. And he said, let's just go ahead and do it. I said, okay. And for the next 20 minutes, it was hot. I was sweating, my arms were hurting. I was cursing internally. Why do I have to do this? I hate this. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> I hate this guy. Why is he making me do this? And I survived the 20 minutes. When that 20 minutes was over, I went to go walk and I was expecting it to be painful. And there was zero, zero pain, zero pain. And I thought this can't be true. And I went and I ran up the hill. I walked down the hill. I turned around in circles, no pain. And it stayed like that for three whole days. I didn't need a pain reliever. I didn't have to get a massage, nothing. So I was at that point convinced that I needed to add Qigong into my regular movement every day. And I never stopped doing Qigong from that day. 
Amazing. So let's get into what the heck is Qigong for the people who are like, they were pronouncing this weird name and they've never done it. And I can totally relate, by the way, to when I did some Qigong and sometimes in my life, it's painful. You hold some position and sometimes it's boring. So your mind gets like, wants to be like, hey, let's move more. Like, why do I have to hug the tree or like do whatever? You know? it's, like, it's like, it's such a mind game that you go through. But if you can go through it, there's like beauty. So why What not? Uh, what is Chi Kong, and why would one try it? In case you're not yet convinced that it should be good for you. <laughs> um, okay, so Chi Kong, it uh, it's kind of a generic name. It it mm -hmm. it it's just means like um, breath technique or you know breath skill. If you translate it literally, um, it can be fast. It can be slow. A lot of people think Tai Chi first. Mm -hmm. uh, when they think of Chi Kong. I always think of Chi Kong as structure, um, moving, posture. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the fundamental um, basic human skills required for all activities, but it's refined in a scientific way. If I had a shorter definition, I, 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 wish, I, <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> but it's, it's, how to be a, it's how to be a healthier human, how to be a more balanced emotional um, vessel and how to integrate both the thinking, the doing, the feeling, and the not knowing curiosity. It's, it's that. I like it when you call it moving acupuncture. Wow, yeah. So, and, and it's something that you do with your clothes on, that's something that you do uh, moving, mostly standing from my understanding, unless there's other forms that I don't know about, like just for people to kind of like have that, that full visual of it. <laughs> okay, so the standing is, is one kind of Qigong, um, the Tai Chi, the Bagua, the Xing Yi, the, the Lu Hei Ba Fa, the, the you know, Tong Bai, all of the martial arts, those are Qigong. In essence, the iron body, the, the strengthening, um, that's Qigong. Mm -hmm. Making love, as you as you know very well, is, is a is a mind-body activity. Any somatic thing that you do, from walking to standing to breathing to not walking to sitting to sleeping becomes Qigong. Mm -hmm. uh, Qigong is just applying your full attention and awareness internally to your activity and being able to uh, ref, you know to refine what you're doing. Okay, so see, <laughs> this is perfect. I can see the light great, bulb. It's a great segue. First of all, by the way, Salim, you should not assume that you have to do it with your clothes on because I think you can do it with your clothes off just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I do it every day. That's how I wake up and, and train. Um, it doesn't, it. It, in fact, <laughs> yeah. You can, and in fact, you can sleep doing Qigong. There's Hua Mountain, Harmony Mountain, yeah, that's sleep true. Qigong. <laughs> There's really no, there's a Qigong for everything. There's a dream Qigong for being, yeah, able, I to, didn't know. Wow. For being able to program your dreams. <laughs> so let's, let's, since we are the Love Lab podcast, sex, love, and relationship, let's talk a little bit about, so you, you both discovered Qigong through your own path, right? So we kind of established how you got there, the health challenges you have, how you discovered Qigong, the amazing effects that it had on your body. And We also want to kind of get into, okay, so what did you learn about your sexuality and your sexual energy and how you relate to others? Like there's been a bunch of key words that you've already kind of dropped in there. And uh, I want to see if maybe we can touch on some of those. <laughs> you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. You know, I always thought that as a dancer, I already knew a whole lot about my body, but Qigong was a lot different way of moving so i learned that a lot of the time i was doing a lot of forceful things and trying to make my body um how you say uh form around that you know i wanted my body to do certain things and i would do what i needed to do in order for that to happen but my body was trying to tell me that it needed some help that there was injury that there was too much energy being put out with the activities that i was asking for it to do So when I first started Qigong, it was very hard because I'm used to moving all the time. So doing standing exercises for me was my challenge, but it gave me the opportunity to start listening and to see what my body actually needed. And like sexually, like they're, they're trying to 
Yeah, no, we'll get, we'll, we'll get to that. Right. <laughs> this is this is foreplay, Yadi. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. Um, go ahead. Well, you know, so being Midwestern and being like being from where I'm from and, and having that, uh, there's not a strong esoteric presence in the Midwest. I mean, it's put up or shut up where, where I grew up. And so when somebody would call me out on Qigong, like, what is it? Does it work? I would say, get get over here. Like, I want to show you. <laughs> I'll show you. You want to know what Qigong is? When it came down to sexual Qigong, I had no sexual energy when I was sick. I, I was completely, I had no sexual drive, nothing. And I learned um, probably from 18 different people, like the, uh, the Shi Sui Jing and a few of the other things that, that were supposed to uh, strengthen the, the Jing, strengthen the... Um, the sex drive and libido. So if I was trying to tell somebody, hey, no, this works for sex too. What I'm not giving you the same offering. Like, get get here now. <laughs> and let, let me show you what this jing is about. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, most men, and this is just me talking about um, what I know, most men have a, a skewed relationship with sex where um, it's more about Okay, I'm I'm supposed to be, you know, vital. I'm supposed to be like I have to do a good job here, and it's such a psychological uh, psychological like block with men that, like, men will go for years unsatisfied with sex because um, they think their job is to do a good job. And just to like, I'm get, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna throw down. Like, I'm gonna throw down. She's gonna like, she's gonna go crazy. And like, I'll just sit back after the, you know, the deed is done, and I'll pound on my chest, and she'll be my little, um, you know. It's interesting that you say that because most of the time, it's the women who are unsatisfied for several years. Women have, yeah, women have a, a different reason for being unsatisfied. In my opinion, I'm not a woman, but in in from what I hear from women women will say, well, you know, he, he didn't, I was never involved. He didn't know what I liked. Um, he, I, I was kind of just there for him. And it ends up where it's so psychological. This is what I mean. It's a psychological thing where like, I feel like I have to do a good job. And as long as she's convinced that I tried, then she knows I care. Right. And that's, that's honestly, <laughs> that's what regular sex is like. But your, your throwing down may not be uh, her, her idea of a good throwing down, <laughs> right? Right, right. Sometimes and it might be, that might be what she likes, but a lot of times, no, it, you know, you... Um, and a lot of times we don't say anything and we don't really connect to what it is that we need and how to say it. Uh, and sometimes we're not connected to our own body enough to make sure that we know what it is that we need and to say it. Um, yeah. You know, training, that kind of Qigong training gives you the confidence to understand what your body is like and also the confidence to communicate so that you can tell your partner what it is that you need from them and vice versa. I could just look at somebody now and just be like, oh, your sex is terrible. Like, <laughs> We don't tell people that, though. <laughs> you, can, you can tell us off air. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you can tell who has secrets like it's um That's true. there are places in the it's funny because everything physical is mental is emotional everything is everything right we just look at somebody and just from the way they speak the way they move you can tell what kind of person uh, what kind of relationship they have um with sex and it, it sounds kind of robotic the way i'm saying it um that's just how i sound but the uh yeah, the truth is, I can look at a, a man and I can see, okay, his understanding of sex is is basically that. Like, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm just, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, I want to just kind of reiterate a few things because you, you said them, but I want to make sure the audience understands them. Is that there, there are certain things that Qigong teaches you that translate directly into your sex life in the bedroom. And I'll start you off with one, which is 
it gets you into your body, right? So one of the things you're talking about is how much guys get in their head about how they got to do a good job and, and put on a performance. Whereas the Qigong can get you more into your body. There is uh, definitely the fact that it can teach you how to move the energy. There's the fact that it can um, teach you how to be more present and connect. And I, I would just maybe if you could expand on some of the um, some of the positive things that Qigong can teach people and how that can really translate into their relationship and into their sex life. For, for men, for women, you, um, for men, I, I can choose when I have an orgasm. I can choose when I have an ejaculation. I can choose if I want them to go together. Um, and most people can. You can personally. Yeah, I can choose if I want this to be um ejaculatory sex or no mm -hmm. like i can I, that's it was it's not new anymore <laughs> new, i was like oh my god you know, but, it's because you've learned how to move the energy and how to control the energy right yeah, yeah. Yeah. either by force or by um you know the the hard way and the easy way the thing <laughs> i get to do it the hard way is by any means necessary like i want to i'll i'll keep going but it's still back to that oh, i have to do a good job i have to you know i have to keep going i don't want to finish early but it was interesting when we first um when we first met i knew that he was doing this program but we didn't talk about it and for several months he didn't tell me that he knew how to control that aspect mm. and he uh finally told me and you know, he was waiting for my reaction and I already knew. And so I told him, I said, I already knew that this is something that you could do. So I don't find it strange because I have actually, what I found interesting was that I knew someone in the flesh who could actually do that. I had heard about this concept. I think it was the Tao of Sexology by Stephen Chang. Yeah, first and book in English. Yeah, and I, I had read that some time ago, but I put it away because I thought that those things that he was talking about was not even reachable it wasn't even something that you could actually do in the physical so i thought okay yeah i'll never find somebody who could do that and then finally i do and i go okay <laughs> oh yes you can we're <laughs> out there is, yeah this is the beginning of a new journey with that so um, <laughs> that was a very very interesting that he didn't share that right away and i thought that was um that was just you know if you say it right away it's kind of corny <laughs> <laughs> Nice to by meet you. Way. By the way, I can control I my know. ejaculation. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I have I have students who do that. They'll, they'll meet ladies and say, "Wait, well, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm recycling now." <laughs> I'm like, what have you been? Uh, you're recycling your plastic. <laughs> Tip for guys: not a good pickup line. Trust us. <laughs> All right, so we'll come. We'll reuse, renew, recycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come back more to that, uh, but let's uh, do a little break for anyone who is listening and is a couple and needs some help. If you are a committed couple who is stuck in a rut and just going through the daily motions instead of connected, connecting the way you used to, and you're tired of stale mechanical sex that lacks spontaneity and fun, and you don't want to live a life of average, and you also want to learn how to separate your ejaculation and orgasm, then Kevin and I would like to invite you to join our highly sexed power couple plan in a program. So if you give us 90 days, we will help you bring the passion back between the sheets and be synced up sexually so that you can thrive with more purpose and passion in life. So go to celineremy.com forward slash passion to learn more about our program. It's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. And then, you know, forward slash how to spell passion. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> so so we know that uh, you know how to separate your ejaculation and orgasm. And I think most of our listeners, if they've been with us for a while, they've heard that concept because we talk about this a lot. These are things that we teach our, uh, our clients and people who work with us. So I think the first step is having that awareness, that knowing that they can be separated, they're not the same thing, and that your sex life can look so radically different once you are able to do that. Uh, so I'm curious a little bit about like my mind goes goes into you can do all these cool things whatever tricks can you do what does your sex life look like you know <laughs> and kind of don't hold back the details <laughs> <laughs> we did all of the tricks and the fun stuff early and we had a lot of fun doing that 
and it was great. But then we got to the point where we didn't feel like we had to impress each other with that all the time. Mm -hmm. And our sex life became more of a bonding experience and less of a show. <laughs> so, because a lot of times that means that you're not present if you're trying mm -hmm. to impress mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having bonding time, I like to call it, is very essential. And sometimes you have to put your ego aside and, you know, say, I don't necessarily need to try to impress this person at this time. I probably need to feel what they're feeling, see how they're doing. And sometimes uh, sex is a different kind of communication. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, so we're in clinic. Like we, we work like six days a week in clinic. Yeah. And, um, I, honestly, um, it's a lot of physical labor and, um, yeah, I mean, I do, if I'm being honest, like <clears throat> if we, if we made it a priority and said, Hey, you know, we're going to be sexual. That's almost like that. It becomes mental. Like we're going to be, it's just something that, um, it's a, I don't know how to describe, like the clinic is almost taking more energy than, um, having that, that. Um, well, we've had to make, we have to consciously make couple time because a lot of times clinic will take over with the day-to-day -day operations. And you, what happens is you tend to put things off couple wise. And if you do that, things suffer. So I always say, because we're in business together as well. I always say that if we have a good relationship, we will also have a good business. Yeah. Um, the thing is like, it, I don't know how to explain like I see people every day and a lot, sometimes it's like they just have a headache or, you know, they just have like a, a rotator cuff injury or something like that. And then I see people that are nearly dead and uh, stage four cancer or, you know, the, you know, like a dysbiosis or something like that, where, or they have C diff or they're dying, you know, right in front of me. And um, the energy that, that you use to express things sexually is the same energy that you'll use to help people. That's it's a creative point. energy. Um, I said earlier in, a, in this podcast that I hated people. And I, I didn't say it as a joke. Like I, I wouldn't be a kind person if I hadn't gotten sick. Um, the same kind of energy that it takes to show love to your partner is required to, in a different way, to show compassion and help nourish people. So I've almost taken some of the sexual training and sort of transmuted it for the time being into clinic. Um, that's an honest answer. Like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound exciting from like a, a the, the sex um, and love lens, but it's just, that's true. Yeah, but what it does is, and this is something we talk about all the time on the show, is that, you know, many different cultures have different words for, you know, what we would say sexual energy. We could call it sexual energy or chi or jing or prana or they have all these different words to mean life force energy. And yeah. so I think it's really good for the listeners to hear it again from somebody other than just us <laughs> that it's all the same. And that's, that's kind of the point. And when, when, we're, when we're doing this whole episode here on sexual qigong and increasing your energy, what we really want people to understand is that it's all the same creative life force energy. And you can harness that and you can channel that into whatever you want to do. So you can put that into your clinic. You can put that into lovemaking. And it doesn't really matter what you do with it. As long as you cultivate it, you move it and you channel it and you use it for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's a great it's a good point um, because uh, if at the time when I was making music when she was dancing that kind of energy went to other things. Um, but I, I tell people this: I, I could be Romeo to somebody, I could I could be whatever, and she you know she could be Juliet to me. But it that has taken a backseat to really helping uh, people survive, and especially during the pandemic. If I'm being honest, but it is that same force, like you say, it it is that life force that, um, and sometimes it's just having a little, a spark of, of playfulness or whatever it is that makes somebody feel better. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, you're trying to connect to people, whether it's through lovemaking or whether it's in a clinic or whether it's through writing a song or building a house, whatever it is, it, it, it's what bonds us together. It's recognizing, um, the unification in our lives, you know, but so we've clinicians 
So Trauma. what can our listeners do right now to increase their sexual energy? So you might have, is there a particular practice or uh, a first exercise that you can walk them through something, you know, something short and easy to start with? 300 wall squats. Um, <laughs> he's, he's not kidding about that. <laughs> uh, if you're broken down, if you're a guy, you've broken down, start, learn wall squats. Look up Zhineng, Z-H-I-N-E-N-G, Zhineng Qigong. As, uh, master Pan Ming. I have programs, y'all have programs, um, but if you want the first thing that's going to get you out of the gate right now today, learn how to do a full body squat like people do in China when they use the bathroom. Yeah. Like learn how to do mm -hmm. a full squat because you're going to open that foramen magnum, which is that space in the pelvic uh, girdle where all of your reproductive um, jing will flow through. You're going to open up the, the chung mai, you're going to open up the central vessel, you'll open up the, the four glands in the head, you basically open up the entire microcosmic orbit in a single motion just from learning how to do a proper squat. Inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Use the door frame if you have to. I was going to say, if you're not strong enough to do it alone, use the door frame. It'll help keep the posture correct and you won't get as tired as easily. And, and if, you, uh, if you want a great looking butt, uh, do squats. <laughs> we have a day. We'll get you and, and what lady doesn't want a great looking butt <laughs> this, is, this is why we do like 75 every day <laughs> um, well, the ladies too i remember you said uh, someone had done squats and they had an easier time with childhood yeah my ex-wife I, I give her like i wanted him to say ex -wife. Say, i didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> my ex-wife i'll say this positive she's listening hot. Um, uh yeah she gave birth in under an hour uh, it, she was doing uh, 100 squats a day and mm -hmm. she gave birth in the squatting position. That's how you should do it. Uh, like, it's totally wrong that we actually lay down on our backs and, and uh, give birth like this. Naturally, we are meant to squat. If you look in many cultures, I mean, when they work in the rice fields and they just, they will squat and give birth. Any indigenous cultures, that's how it happens. Anyway, this is not the purpose of this episode. I'm getting like all fired up about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So they need to help deliver babies. So, yeah. <laughs> babies happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Is is there uh, any? Is there? Is it different for men and women in terms of like practices and cultivation? For in your opinion, like, do you think that uh, is there is there a difference there? And maybe George, you have something else you want to add? Maybe for the women's perspective. Okay. Um, oftentimes women think too much and don't breathe properly. So mm. if you can learn how to not think, this is very hard to do. If you can learn <laughs> how to not think and just be, that's one of the things that you should learn first. And the other thing is to learn, you know, don't hold your breath, uh, you know, learn how to cultivate how, all of these things so that you can do them in the moment. And that way you can actually be present when you're in the middle of you know, whatever intimacy you're doing at the time. Um, a lot of women also, and this is not necessarily as physical, but they also absorb other people's feelings throughout the day. And mm -hmm. oftentimes what they're feeling is not actually theirs. And that can keep them from being connected, attracted or aroused from their partner. Mm -hmm. So learning how to filter that and get rid of what's not theirs is key to liver, refocus. Liver five. Liver five. Liver five. Liver five point. <laughs> <laughs> liver five gets rid of turbid liver cheek. That's the. Uh, ah, yes. They used to prick it, and you would see, um, you know, dark uh, purple and black blood come out of liver five. That's it's by uh, spleen six. Mm -hmm. It's almost on the bone, but it's extremely sensitive if, if you press it. You can press it. If yeah, you're carrying other people's emotions. Yes, exactly. And, and where is it located? It's on. Uh, it's on the. Uh, on the ankle. No, it's, or, up, know, if I it's in between. Lane. It's in between the big toe and the second toe. No, no, liver five is screen six <laughs> is signing jiao. So. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Liver five is. Go ahead. It's on the. It's, <laughs> it's on the. It's on the lower leg, in between the ankle and the kneecap. If you if you have just go to Google Images and look up liver five. Okay. Um, it, can, it controls like for men too. A lot of times we have we make love and let our anger out. Like mm -hmm. when we have an ejaculation, that's when it, it's like, here, you take this. 
<laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then we absorb it. And it's like, where did I get this from? Oh. <laughs> this isn't mine. But should I should I put up my legs so we can show? If you can, yeah. <laughs> if you can get your leg in this. If you, you want, guys, if you are, we, we can, can see, see it. Yep. If you're watching the video, okay. Yadi is showing it right there. Got right it. There. And if not, just go to Google and have that. <laughs> awesome. Good to know. <laughs> So we have, uh, we are coming towards the end of the show and we always have our last favorite questions. But before we get to that, tell our listeners where they can find more um, about you. I know that if they are in Charlotte, they can come directly to your clinic, but you also have programs and Qigong programs that you sell online courses for any, anywhere around the world for people there. <laughs> Is it qigongsaved.me? Qigong with a Q, Q-I-G-O-N-G, saved me, that Emmy. Mm -hmm. um, there's male sexual Qigong if you ask for it. I haven't, and actually, if you look up Yadi Alamin on the internet, the people who stole my program will hit Google's ranking first. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that, <laughs> there's that. And then there's, um, what is it? Cellular hydrogen. Cellular hydrogen. For molecular, uh, molecular hydrogen as well. Yes. And uh, charlotteaccubodywork.com. Those all right work. we'll have all the links uh, in the descriptions uh, for sure too mm -hmm. uh, but if you are interested in learning more about qigong some of the program and check out yadi and joy go to their website so now we come to our very last question and favorite juicy one uh, we are curious what is your best sexual talent mm. and go <laughs> 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 Oh wow! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jeopardy think. music going in the background. Do, 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 do. This is we always. Did you think. want me? To, no. You can go first if you want. No, no, I was going to answer. What is yours? <laughs> Wait, you're going to answer for no, me? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you can do the question the way you want. It's like sex. You can do it the way you like, as long as it works for you. <laughs> I'm far more sensual because I, you know, I'm used to touching things and people and like. I, I I can feel you. where things uh, feel good to you. Like I, mm. I I watch and listen to you because that's what I do. Like I make mm -hmm. contact with people. Yeah. 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 All right. actually, you. Well, <laughs> this is why we bonded because I'm also a very sensual person too. And I actually like to involve all five senses and I want my partner to involve all five senses as well while they are intimate so if there's a dog farting in the background it's it's a, no, it's a mood killer, killer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah you enjoy thank you for being here today and sharing with us and uh, sharing about your story it was great to hear that we hope our listeners are inspired and um we will see you all and hear you all next week in our next episode do Qigong <laughs> absolutely do Qigong alright everybody that's all the time we have for this episode and we will see you next week we hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast if you enjoy this show subscribe leave us a review and share it with your friends and for more free exclusive content join us in the passion vault at celineremy.com forward slash vault that's c-e-l-i-n-e-r-e-m-y dot com forward slash vault thanks for listening and remember you're amazing <laughs>